page uh, uh, bandwidth trade off. Um, this is the, you know, so far we were talking about erasure codes and Reed Solomon codes. So, this is the first time in distributed storage code uh, an idea was brought in, and this uh, we'll go through about this. So, in this lecture, we look at what is the concept of a regenerative code. So, I would like to keep the discussion as interactive as possible so that if you have any questions, so please ask me at that time. And the, the parameters and a concept of a repair bandwidth. So, when a node fails now, the nodes are able to talk to the surviving nodes and uh, repair themselves and the concept there. Now, in order to do that, you know, there's also, you know, kind of, it comes with a proof that information flow graph representation and cuts. So, that tells you actually when it is repaired, uh, what is the optimality of, uh, of that process. So, uh, uh, and this comes out that actually uh, the, there are multiple uh, points on which this optimality can be done, not just exactly in terms of storage or bandwidth. So, the, the main the discussion that I tell you that is mainly because of the, the uh, you know, in, in the distributed storage nodes now, it is connected over a network and the bandwidth becomes an important uh, part, also, also the amount of uh, storage. And so, this uh, dichotomy, this is a new idea come and so, we will talk about it. So, it's a, there's a lot of uh, uh, theory uh, involved in it. So, sometimes it can be uh, pretty uh, difficult to see the background and, and go through. So, we will, we will go with some examples and we will try to understand various uh, things. So, again a bit of a, um, um, a background and, and uh, some motivation for entering into this. As you can see that uh, the storage uh, technologies are in, in general realized by large distributed data centers and you know, sometimes using clouds or peer to peer network often using general commodity hardware and one of the you know main characteristics of these thing is that they fail and that's uh, very clear and so in order to uh, one of the th we have to handle these failures in in, in this uh, scenario and also this is um, um, so this massive also the problem is why we need a distributed storage so we'll actually come back with some of the things it's it's because the data is uh, growing exponentially um, and uh, the storing of these things on a, uh, on a distributed network presses uh, significant challenges, you know, basically the reliability and, and also the security. So, first we have to uh, um, protect from the data failures and also from unauthorized access. So, that we will look at later, but we will this time we will fo focus on, on the data fail failures in this. So, the simple uh, solution for ensuring the reliability as we already mentioned in the first thing is replication. So, that way uh, when the replicated data uh, and so initially when uh, storage centers were there that was the one which has been adopted. So, you have a replication, but it became impracticable as the data grew uh, to the magnitude of thousands of petabytes. And, uh, so, obviously there are some good examples there Ocean Store, Microsoft Azure Storage, Facebook, HDFS Ride, etc. So, the issues there is that the problem that we consider today in this lecture is about the node failure. So, when a node fails uh, coded in the coded, uh, coded storage system, the repair process has to download data from the uh, surviving nodes to recover the failed node. Now, obvious method to accomplish this is to allow a replacement node to connect any K of them and regenerate data based on the failed node. That is always possible and that is there already in the erasure code. But downloading the entire data to recover a data stored in a single failed node is only a fraction of the data is an overkill. So, if you just want to recreate one, but you need to download the whole thing. That is the main issue. I think I have already mentioned this in the, in the first track, in the motivation. So, the regeneration process also now consumes uh, precious network bandwidth and the failed node is to be brought back soon as possible. So, that was, that was the kind of idea. So, re, so, when we let us look at I mean erasure codes do these uh, things, but the only thing is that it involves more bandwidth, ok. It is a similar issue. So, we will come uh, the, the so the better option for that is to use an idea of a regenerative code, 
This was uh, introduced in a first seminal work by Demarcus and other group of people and there is a lots of work after since then. So probably uh, I refer to the, uh, this uh, main paper that has been published in information theory but there are also subsequent uh, uh, tutorials and on this idea so you could do. So some of this work came up using uh, the network uh, multi uh, network coding uh, theorems uh, started in 2000 so they were able to kind of cast it to here and argue for a, a bounds on this and also explicitly able, able to construct codes and this heralded a kind of a new area uh, in coding theory now and so the focus is on actually network uh, uh, IO uh, and also for recovery and distributed erasure coded storage system. So these codes are more efficient than the classical erasure codes for storage and they also demonstrate an optimal trade off between bandwidth required to repairing a failed node and a storage required per node. So what was observed was if you want to actually reduce the, um, reduce the bandwidth you may have to store per node a little more. So at the moment when in, in MDS code, in erasure code, uh, any k of them would have that have a minimum information. Uh, but if you want to now store uh, codes, uh, now if, if you want to uh, repair it more efficiently uh, and you want to reduce the bandwidth, uh, you probably may need to allow a little more in each node, uh, but that will that way the bandwidth can be released. So they, they found this uh, thing. So this type of uh, trade-off. That means if you try to optimize the storage per node, then the bandwidth uh, cannot uh, has a some, um, some amount, but of course you could minimize that also, but that is one aspect. Or if you want to minimize the bandwidth, then you may have to store alpha. That came up and so probably that is the objective of uh, today's uh, <coughs> talk on that. So we will study uh, about regenerative codes and storage bandwidth trade-off uh, trade in coming time now. So let us look at some, as is the case with us, so we need some kind of uh, um, terminology here. Um, this is with n storage nodes, we will assume and it has some data for the message and we will see the capital B symbols that is the size of the file to be stored in that thing. So you can, you can think it as a symbols. The message symbols are assumed to belong to a finite field Q, so we do not care, it is a big uh, finite field. I mean, we are, as I again mentioned in the yesterday's in erasure coding talk, we could, um, if the file size is very big, uh, we could have a queue and we could repeat the same code for many things. So you can have a striping, similar ideas. But you can say the message symbols are assumed to be a finite field queue. So each of these n nodes store only the fraction of the data and has a capacity alpha. So each node has a capacity alpha symbols, and the user which is in this case a data collector has to access any k of them to retrieve the store process. This process is called reconstruction. So, and typical means of repairing a failed node is to uh, you know is do download an entire message from the network and extract the data from it. That is that's the one other way. So, in addition to n and k, um, uh, distributed storage system has a third parameter called d. So now you, you do not get confused with the minimum distance that we talked about for coding because that is unfortunately it has come and I, I did not want to change it because that is being used now. But D is actually a, the uh, not the minimum distance in this context, it is the uh, parameter D associated with it is called a repair degree. That means it is the number of nodes that a failed node would contact to repair, okay, that is the D. So, so you, as and when the context is clear, so this should be, uh, you should be clear about it. So this is the this is the kind of a figure. So you have a alpha capacity nodes are there up to k. Um, so this should be k plus one up to node n, um, and this would be the, the the data collector. This should be node n, and the data collector actually collects k of them uh, and recreate it. And in case of regeneration, now the new node that so for example node one is uh, is uh, node n or one of them is. Uh, um, failed and the new node has to contact D of them. So this is a repair degree that is used in this. So this is a two parameters we use. So let us look at the parameter D. So the conventional uh, Reed Solomon codes uh, treat each fragment stored in a node in a single symbol belonging to a finite field. So with the C RS code which we already discussed uh, each the fragment of a data that is considered as a single uh, symbol. Now in contrast regenerative codes 
uh, course is called as a vector symbol and so uh, you can hence you can treat each fragment as being comprised of alpha symbols. So, alpha tells you the alpha symbols per node. So, in, in contrast to RS code alpha will be equal to 1, one symbol per, per node. So, linear operations over the field in this case permit the transfer of fraction of data stored in a particular node. So, when you, you can make some linear operations and, and, and send it. So, thus upon failure of a node the replacement node is allowed to connect to any T of the remaining nodes and download beta which is less than or equal to alpha symbols from each node because you cannot beta cannot be more than alpha because when you are downloading from an node it has to be less than or equal to alpha. So, this is to just to get a some kind of a feel about the different parameters used in the in, in this one. So, you can see that uh, when each node uh, downloads beta from nodes and d times beta symbols are obtained. Uh, so, node must recover alpha symbols. So, obviously at the end when it recreates it, it should have an alpha symbols that was stored in the failed node. Okay. Now, this process uh, is termed as a regeneration. So, you got a old node has gone and new node has arrived and it has talked to the t different nodes downloaded beta symbols from them and in order to recreate alpha symbols in that node. Uh, and so, this uh, d times beta now is d times beta is considered as a repair bandwidth. So, obviously that much of bandwidth is needed to repair a node and we want to minimize that as well um, uh, repair bandwidth. Uh, so, a DSS uh, using regenerative cores you can have a NKD system you can call uh, N is the length of the code, K is the, uh, the dimension of the code again and D is the, uh, the repair degree that you can use. Now, so the code is such that K and D are minimum values under which construction regeneration is always guaranteed. So, code should be that, that re always by talking to D you should be able to guarantee that is what is, is expected out of it. I am just telling you about the, uh, the parameters how it is involved. Okay. Uh, now, this now once you have a D is there, so can D be uh, less than K? No, it cannot be because uh, you, you know K is the uh, information bit is there. So, the range of key thus has to be D to N minus 1. Why can't it is N? Because when a node is failed only you do so, the, the minimum thing is, is only when you fail you do so, k has to be within that range. Okay. So, now d less than k this would imply that the data can be reconstructed by connecting to d nodes thereby contradicting the minimality of k. So, that is not possible. So, it is have a k out of n property. So, also for reconstruction to be satisfied we need alpha should be greater than or equal to beta divided by k because right. The, the, the minimum uh, thing stored per node has to be greater than or equal to size of the file divided by k. Is that clear? Because any k should be able to obtain it. So, this alpha, the, this condition is, is, uh, is a minimum. Okay. So, a regenerative code thus now over fq of field of size q is associated with the collection of parameters now n, k, d, alpha, beta and also capital B which is the size of the file. Okay. Uh, so, where parameters n k d uh, as regarded as primary and alpha, beta and uh, capital B is as a secondary. Let us take consider there is a repair problem uh, in a better way. So, for example, consider with a node with a 4 node. Now, let us see how explicit R s code can be used in this case. So, I have written down this generator matrix uh, with the notation that we talked before. Uh, so, for example, here um, you see this is the uh, things right. Okay. Uh, so, alpha square is alpha plus 1 uh, you know just to in this case I defined it over what is this field. So, if alpha square is equal to alpha plus 1 what field is it? Pardon? G of, GF, GF 2 square yes G F 4. So, alpha square this is just a simple G F square and you can assume that the rest of the uh, fragments can be multiple of G of 4 and, and do it. So, just an example here. Now, I mean really I do not require actual computations here to show you. So, the any code word will be uh, you know let us say has a data A times B times G. So, when once you uh, put a you know when, when you consider this code data. So, for, for example, first node will have A, second node will have B, 
and third node will have A exclusive or B and the last node is A alpha B. Now, you can convince yourself that any 2 by 2 matrix uh, matrices of this matrix is, is invertible and hence this is a this is actually a 4, um, 4, 2 uh, MDS code okay, RS code correct. Um, so, now probably let us consider the repair problem what happens. So, now you can do. So, note that availability of any 2 is sufficient to repair a node. So, an RS code actually offers a reliability of data at smaller overhead, overhead than triple replication. So, for example, if it is triple replication, uh, this um, overhead would be 3 times the uh, data, but now with 4, 2, you are only uh, just use, using a 50 percent additional uh, things, right. So, this gives a at smaller overhead compared to triple replication. Now, in, in a, if for example, in the in a repair problem, for example, if this is uh, gone now, a new node that has to uh, uh, you know has to get equations, what are the different things that it needs to fetch? So, you, you can fetch from any two node. So, obviously, if uh, each one is let us say is 1 MB, uh, let us say 1 MB of data, 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB, 1 MB, to repair uh, this at least you need to do 2 MB. Okay? So, you, you cannot do better than that. right? So, 2 MB, uh, 2 MB of uh, Reverse traffic. Now, can I, if I can show you that I can do it better than that, uh, then you know, then th that that's where the new idea comes in. Okay. So let's say that's the, that's why in in the regenerative case there are certain concepts will come in. The first one is called sub packetization. So, in in case of a RS code, what we do, all the data pertaining to these nodes are kept as packets. So if there are as a file of size, say. Um, 2 MB, they are divided into a packets of each of packet size uh, um, uh, 1 MB uh, with the symbols um, and, uh, and they are kept in n different locations and any k would be sufficient to recreate data. Okay, so then the whole data will be available you can as a block, sometimes block, packet and all get get confused let us say it is a block of data. So, the whole file is divided into different blocks of data. So, in this case the uh, uh, the file has to be in the two blocks of data one will be in uh, node 1, second will be in node 2 and there will be two other nodes will have a linear combination of them which is a parity nodes will be there. Now, um, so the the idea in the regenerative, uh, regenerative code would actually treat these and uh, now store not as the full packets, now treat them as sub packets or sub symbols. So, now you can have some kind of a half symbol. So, instead of one symbol you can have a half symbol. So, that is a sub packetization idea that we will go through once. And then also there is another concept comes is what should be the size of the uh, field. For example, in RS coding with, uh, with the stripe that I mentioned, the size of the field is not that power that matter. So, you can take the whole uh, block of data, you can represent the whole data block of data as a symbols from a finite field that would be and then symbol store each symbols per node that will be that will be sufficient. Whereas, in the, in the new idea uh, with this sub packetization, uh, because of the things we are now treating each packet as sub packets and nodes are allowed to uh, send sub linear functions of sub packets uh, in order to improve the bandwidth. And also, the it will come back to that you can't do one of them separately. So you will have to, you will have a trade-off coming through this theory of that. So then, uh, we'll, uh, because of this new model, you have to consider a couple of repair models. So there are, there are so many concepts are there, and I've chosen to probably illustrate these four. And then, the what is the regenerative code idea? So that just mentioned briefly, and then move on to a more formal representation of this. So, the, this is the, the and this kind of sub packetization is uh, in generally when you have for example, here you know uh, a 1 a 2 what I can do is now I can divide this into different packets. So, for example, I can divide into 2 each one has say um, a, a 1 1 a 1 2 uh, b a, a 2 1 a 2 2 
and so forth. Then the functions can be anything. So, you know, RS treats as some one, but now now this is you can treat that as a sub packet. Okay. Um, so the let's look at the, so there are uh, three models of uh, uh, repair exist in in regenerative code. In the the, the the repair of a failed node now can either be called as some type of a functional repair or the exact repair or exact repair of systematic parts. I will explain uh, more uh, things about much more clearly. In one case of functional repair means that you know we have a code here uh, RS code. So, for example, here it is a, a plus b and a plus alpha b. If even if you choose some other say alpha 1 times a beta alpha 2 times b which is a linear uh, which is linearly independent to some of these vectors you could be you, you could still as an RS code. So, when you uh, when a particular node fails when you recreate such that it is somehow still uh, maintains the, uh, the property of the MDS property and you have a, another linear equation then that is called functional repair. So, you when, you when something is lost you do not really lose the whole data, but you just uh, the data is expressed again with another linear form that is the functional part. And the other one is called the exact repair which you can understand. So, when a node fails the, the regenerative code has to actually prepare the exact node. The exact repair is more attractive because whatever lost has been there. And so, of course, the exact repair will, will throw a bit, bit more uh, issues there you know there are other problems, but the main thing we do. On the other hand what another type of thing what is the we, when we have a regenerative code with the systematic parts where the data is kept in, in, the, in, in the same form as data like it, it is an identity part you know the information part. Uh, then only in the parity part when the parity is locked you, you represent. So, the uh, you can say exact repair of systematic parts uh, also is needed uh, where you tolerate little bit functional in that sense. Uh, that is that is pre precisely equivalent to uh, for example, having this equation here this uh, you know this will be uh, when, when failed will be repaired exactly this way, but these two you we can choose any linear combination of them that is the general idea. So, is that clear? So, I think probably uh, we I will probably mention this idea in, in other way also as we go through. So, and that is what is given here. So, in functional repair the node is functionally equivalent and to the failed node while guaranteeing that the data reconstruction is possible. Contrast to exact repair where new node is supposed to be an exact copy. Uh, so, most pr uh, practical uh, systems will actually choose um, preserve the exact replicas of the data. Okay. So, what is sub uh, uh, packetization? Now, I will now kind of uh, uh, restate the idea of sub packetization that I mentioned. So, M, you, you can see the one idea simply you know so far we know MDS codes are optimal in terms of redundancy reliability trade off because uh, it has just enough information to actually get k info bit out. So, data stored in k packets and they are stored in n nodes and they contain minimum amount of information required to recover original data. So, you do not need anything. So, that that is a it, MDS code is like that way is compact. So, any k node will be sufficient to generate the data. But when node k fails surviving packets need to be downloaded to recover. So, the what idea of sub packetization allows you to is uh, the nodes to have multiple sub called bugs and this is more like a like an array code that we also I think of briefly mentioned in another part. So, you will explain with some examples that will probably more clear that that is kind of thing. So, if I make sure that you know if everybody is in page with this understanding this particular code. So, for example, here so now I, I will now uh, deviate from the generator matrix code and all. So, no, no worry. So, uh, the if you have a, a exact repair idea. So, what let us say there are 4 nodes uh, with the sub packetization enabled. So, the each node will have now symbols uh, more than 1 alpha in this case equal to 2. So, because there is now we divided into 2 and we still keep the rest of the uh, nodes as uh, some linear combination of this data. So, this is an M, you, you can actually this is an MG, MDS code in this case I mean I, I put 2, 3 uh, and all uh, just does not mean that it, uh, anything, but it is just on some field but I do not really need any um, com calculations over it is just a, a kind of thing. So, this is an MDF uh, required. So, if it is an MDS code let us say a particular node fails this node is failed. Okay. Now, this requires 2 packets to repair. 
So obviously, uh, when you send, you know, for example, x1, x2, you need to do. So you can download whole y1, y2, and x1 plus y2. So you can actually cancel this one and get back this. Or if you get, get this and, and this, and so you, you will have, uh, you know, uh, you have uh, y1. Um, you, you can actually take two two times y1 and and, and take out this and uh, you know also two, three times y2 and take this out and, and divide and it can get back. So, by downloading uh, four symbols you can always do it. So, four symbols two, uh, two uh, full packets uh, which is not the sub packet two full packets is required to repair can this be improved ok. That is what uh, I, I, I look at it. So, let us say consider an example with now four nodes. So, this is a this is the idea. So, with four nodes. Uh, so, first one you know remember now the nodes can now send linear combination of the data that they have. So, second node uh, this is uh, this is uh, broken. So, let us say and I need to recreate a new node. So, this one can send y1 plus y2. So, let that be some number a it does not matter something in that field we, we have not specified the field that is not a problem. So, let us say it can send that and uh, this node can send again some like this y1, y2 and y2. If four, uh, fourth node also sends the same sum that way uh, let us say the first person has sent y uh, sorry y1 plus second one sent y1 plus y2. So, I got one linear equation correct. Then I get uh, uh, the second one is x1 plus x2 y, uh, plus y1 plus y2 say I got b some other another equation. So, if what should be the, the you know what should the third person send so that I should be able to recover. So, for example, if, if it sends simply x1 plus 2 y1 and plus uh, 2 x2 plus 3 y2 will that help me. So, let us look at uh, what is the, my goal. My goal is to recreate x1 and x2. There are two unknowns in two variables. So, this equation now let us say look at the number of variables, variables here how many there is y1, y2, y1, y2, x2, y2. So, there are totally four different things and there are only three different unknowns can you solve? You cannot solve ok. Can somebody think you know can uh, you know so look each each node now can send linear combination of it. Uh, and so, if you if I am able to uh, you know uh, tell you about the, the idea here then the whole uh, idea of regenerative code and, and the, the interference alignment which I am going to talk will become pretty clear. So, so with the, the just by sending some of the things you will never be able to achieve right. Can somebody have give me an idea what uh, value that the third person can send huh, so that you we can we can actually uh, recover x1 and x2. So, to recover x1 and x2 really how much how many equations do you need minimum? Two. So, somehow now I have to convert the, the you know oh, but three nodes are the one who is going to send the things. Now, I want to uh, now co collect uh, information in such a way that uh, somehow I should be I should be able to derive two. Um, a useful equations out from this. What else can what can be done? Remember, he can send it just like you know. I, I just gave an example. I, I, this can each person can actually send a linear combination of that data, right? Pardon. Very good uh, for the, the fourth one, right? So what will happen with the two times the upper part? Okay. So what he said was the last one two times the upper part and Oh yeah, two times the upper part, two times this. Okay, let's let's do let's do that calculation. It's two times x1 plus x2. So it's actually two times x1 plus x2 plus four times y1 plus three times y2. Okay, how can you, where 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 did you get two equations still? 
So y1 plus y2, so where, where do you know, so you know with this one you can take x1 plus x2, but with this equation how do I, I how, how do I remove y1 plus y2, that is the thing idea. So I can remove y1 plus y2 from this equation, this two equation, how, I, how am I able to remove that one? So the, look, this is the, you will be getting as a one symbol. So, when, when, when you multiply just the two times the first one, so the value here, um, you know, the, you, you got 4 times y1 and in order to align with y1 plus y2, at least you should get 4 times y2 here. Exactly. So, what we can do now, I can do, so for example, uh, let us say I have here x1 plus 2 uh, y1 and x 2 x 2 plus 3 y 2, I can multiply this one by 1 over 2, I mean whatever the inverse is there in that and this will be 1 over 3, then I get some equation in x 1 plus x 2, does not matter when I, when I sum it, but y 1 plus y 2 will be separate. So, I can then I have something like y 1 plus y2 uh, plus here we have something with this uh, x1 plus x2, x1 plus x2 plus something here okay like some, some will not care about just x1 plus x2 plus uh, uh, some uh, B, uh, b1 plus b2 let us say do not care about it. But now you have uh, that is equal to c, so you got 3 equations where y1 plus y2, y1 plus s2, you can actually take it out. So that means that you can, oh, this y1 plus y2 which is an interference to whatever that is you required which is x1 plus x2 equation. So I can remove that interference and convert 3 equations into 2 equations and having only x1 and x2, clear? I mean there is not only one way to do it, there are multiple ways to do it. So the explicit code construction involve computing all such possibilities in a in, in that way and that is what we go. So, we will look at the, some of the approaches bit of constructing explicit code later, but that is the idea. So, people would look into that. So, now what happening is that, so by using two powers now, I can now get an, one is x1 plus x2 plus 2 b dash, then another you get then b1 x2 x1 plus b2 x x2 is equal to c dash, I can solve this equation for x1, x2 and recreate. This is for of course though, though for the exact repair. So now uh, when this is done now, you have a, uh, so what, what is now tra um, transmitted? So you got a one symbol which is basically a half a, one sub packet, half a packet, half a packet, half a packet. So the total things downloaded is 1.5 as opposed to 2. Uh, and so is 1.5, can you do go further down to 1.5? It so happens at this time that the 1.5 is minimal here and if you understand why 1.5 is minimal, that is what the result of uh, uh, Demarcus and, and others is. That is the, he says that so sometimes you, you could not do better than 1.5 uh, because uh, then he shows through an information flow graph from the existing nodes to all other failed nodes. So, if at all, uh, if you are uh, able to recreate any node, there should be enough flow from source to, to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the recreated node in the, uh, in, uh, by contacting these nodes. So, the, that, and that theorem is going to prove and, and you know you get the minimum for that, huh? but you get the idea here, right? This is all uh, the all the new constructions that comes with modern uh, you know regenerative codes actually uh, involve around this. Okay. Correct. So now instead of uh, two, you can do it by one point five. So this idea is called the interference alignment. Uh, there are uh, multiple solutions, but you can repair x one and x two by downloading only three sub packets as opposed to four sub packets in in case of the. Okay. So, so what uh, this, uh, how does the, you know, basically what, I mean you may ask a question actually, uh, why, uh, why do you need only 
um, 1.5. So that is answered by using a, the parameters of the regenerative code must satisfy uh, a, a, a bound which is the, 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 the size of the field size that can be represented is upper bounded by a quantity which is given by here from i is equal to 0 to k minus 1 is a minimum of alpha or d minus i times beta. So this bound and its proof using a it is called a cut set bound of network coding and it is a major result in the field of regenerative codes. So we will I'll briefly look over and also brought out the other issues uh, that uh, came. So, uh, uh, so the, you now understand the what is sub packetization and also the, that uh, concept so far. Yeah, this is clear. Yeah. So this is the paper that to read, and uh, there are so many, so much of information there in that. So let us say how we will look at now information uh, flow graph representation. So distributed is in a graph. Uh, so now distributed storage system now is represented as a graph, termed as an information flow graph. So what is an information flow graph? Uh, where now in the information flow graph, each storage node is modeled using two nodes. One is called in node, one other one is called out node. Now idea is that any in node uh, to any out node, you has a link of wire capacity four, so for capacity alpha, because that is what the constraints that come in our, our system. So when, whenever uh, some node fails, you need to recreate that node. So you may contact some other nodes to recreate it. So in node gets data from some existing D nodes, but then when it is out node, when it is stored, uh, it can only have alpha symbols. So this particular concept has been modeled uh, in the information flow graph uh, uh, as uh, having a, a link of alpha capacity from in node to out node. So now you understand when you, I, where you cut the things. If you use that, uh, uh, if you cut uh, after the uh, storage node, that means you will be choosing alpha uh, as a bandwidth. If it is before you, you choose, cut the node, you choose a d times beta. Okay? So then we, we will have to measure, you know, measure around this, measure the thing. So any in node is connected to any out by capacity alpha. So capturing this constraint that each node can only store alpha symbols. So the graph now evolves in time uh, through an infinite chain of failures and regeneration. So where alpha change from active to inactive state and vice versa. So just to give an idea of, of a, another one, idea called cut and mean cut, I put a definition here. So maybe that it may not be clear in the beginning itself, but as we go through and I will try to uh, explain. So a, what is a directed cut in the graph between, so I want a graph between source S to a fixed data collector uh, is a subset C of edges such that there is no directed path starting from source to uh, data collector that does not have one or more edges. Okay? So I, I just want to, I will explain with the, the things, a min cut is a cut between source and data collector which has the smallest total sum of edges because, because uh, we, we are now um, in the business of actually computing exactly the, the bandwidth. right? So some other things are coming here, so here I will explain through this. Uh, uh, e example. So, for example, so when you set up initially a, 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 a storage network, so th th there is some kind of a super source that has that data, uh, and you can assume that um, uh, this super set data uh, is uh, you know stored into first n nodes is using alpha capaci capacity. Okay. So this is the nodes is stored, and after that, in the in, in the analysis, the, the the super set is not referred, and all the data is now there in the in, the, in, in those nodes. Now what happens in the distributed storage network? Sometimes some nodes can fail. So for example, uh, some node failed now uh, at some point of time. So this is actually not a graph uh, as it evolves, but it can, I am just explaining the infinite graph that comes because if, for example, what happens in, 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 in a, you look at the practical scenario, you have in a, like a, a distributed storage, you have a big fall and you are divided and, and actually put, it, put uh, you know, uh, place them onto different n nodes, and then after that, n nodes. If a node fail, another node repairs, and so the data is perpetually there in the system. So to model that uh, kind of a uh, be behavior, so you have a source node you put into different alpha, uh, and so let us say that what, what happens? The first repair happens. So you have you brought in some in node that connects to some d of them, and each of them have a capacity beta. So beta symbols are downloaded. 
uh, and uh, of course uh, that that will be constructed and put back in as an out as an out out node. So that becomes a, a valid node inside the system. Now that has replaced it. So any node that is in that process will be uh, will be kept in this this form. After some time, another node may fail, and that node uh, is uh, you know starts again with a, let us say an in node. It contacts, for example, uh, to one of the, 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 the node that has been recently created and some d minus one of the previous one. So the recent ones are, are you know they they yeah, they are evolving. They may you know so most of the times when he explains uh, this one um, uh, in the paper, it is for the functional one. So. I, you know, you, you probably at this point of um, everybody is familiar with functional uh, 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 repair versus the exact repair. So, for exact repair, uh, understanding the uh, flow graph is not very hard. But on the other hand, there are other problems in actually f uh, finding the uh, um, trade-off. Whereas the, uh, the trade-off initially explained with respect to functional one, so obviously uh, in uh, in comes in and, and alpha goes out, you know. So that kind of thing. So next time, what happens? It contacts to d minus of some of them and one of them from here. Uh, ne next time, uh, that might the, you know you got a new bond, new new node, and so forth. Uh, you, you can eat next time you go to d minus two of uh, the previous uh, other ones and two of these nodes. Um, uh, you can you can create uh, uh, and keep on alpha and so forth. So idea of a, uh, of a data collector is that uh, you can assume that this particular link has infinite capacity that it can take anything. So the idea that it should be able to take any k node and and and, and recreate the data. So in order for for example the, the the bound you get from information theory for this is that. Uh, we, you know, when the repair should be such that uh, when a data collector, um, um, if data collector has to recreate the file, there should be enough flow of information uh, from the source to the data collector in this graph. Okay. Now this, uh, now for that, you know, uh, then if this graph is a pretty big graph. You know, it can go infinitely. Uh, if you want to really uh, check the total bandwidth, you can you can have a cut for this graph at any places. So you could you could take a cut uh, from exactly uh, nodes like this, alpha, alpha, alpha. Then it will become uh, k times alpha. You get a, you get bond. But you want to choose. You want to choose such that now that is minimized. Okay. So in how how he do that? That's the kind of idea that he brings in and, and shows. Just like for example in the previous example here, showed that instead of four you could only do three, uh, and thereby you get a lower bound on beta, uh, and then uh, that's what that's how he, he progresses. Clear? Okay. So at least some ideas about the. information flow graph cut is, is understood. So now let us take the failure handling in terms of a flow graph terminology. So on failure of a storage node, um, what on a failure of a storage node, uh, say a road node L, it is replaced by a new node. The newcomer now communicates with beta bits each from D surviving nodes and so making total uh, um, repair bandwidth as d times beta. So it is it is found by connecting now out node j such that all the i1, i2, i d uh, the j does not belong to i is in, in i with links with capacity b. So if that, that can be chosen with that data b. So you know this is another example that he uh, considers uh, in, in the in the thing. So it is a 4 2 code it, it, this is basically the functional equivalent of the thing that I mentioned. In, in, in the example. So you, go, you have uh, two nodes initially uh, in the source, uh, then that is uh, connected with uh, say for example linear combination of this in, in this, these four nodes, there is a 4 2 command. Uh, uh, and so for example, and this actually illustrates a, a creation of a new node uh, which is only downloading by uh, three pa half packets compared to this. So, okay, you can see that the, this is actually the when when it is recreated, you also create uh, the you 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 record the the constants used to create the linear combination. So that data what is there present in this will go on. Okay. 
So, this is the uh, this is how the repair uh, go, goes on explained with the 4 2 example. So, here the repair scenario is explained. So, for example, it is the same idea that I explained with the previous example here. So, for example, a file of size uh, 2 MB is divided into 4 fragments A1, A2, B1, B2 of 5, 0.5 MB each, then they stored on 2 nodes. So, 4 parity fragments are generated uh, after coding. So, spread with 2 new nodes, making total number of nodes to 4. Say one node fails as in the figure here and then in, in intermediate computations are performed using appropriate multiplying coefficients on the data and surviving nodes create parity fragments. These fra parity smaller parity fragments generated are then sent to a newcomer node which uses them to create a new fragments and replace last fragments. So, the point to be noted is that the repair bandwidth is now reduced to 1.5 MB as compared to the repair uh, scenario with the 2 MB, the same idea comes in these things. Okay. So, this is the, uh, I mean I, the, this is the, uh, from the flow graph point of view to get that kind of a proof, we will uh, look at this way. So, for example, here is there is a source, now it, it has an infinite capacity and that gets stored into 4 different nodes initially right. And then um, assume that you see the, this has an alpha equal to 1 capacity, um, this is uh, you, you know uh, this also every out order has an alpha capacity. So, now the new this node as uh, x phi 1 is now um, is um, failed and so you, you create a new node. So, new node contacts uh, beta from all the 3 um, and then you give a new node and so for example, the condition that uh, you expect and in this particular case let us say I can take this one and this and the, those two should be able to uh, um, you know use to create uh, two symbols because that is the condition that is need. So, what, when can a data collector here be able to uh, recreate the last data, uh, the data properly is provided when creating this one there should be enough flow from source to uh, source to to the this node uh, having uh, you know achieving this uh, 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 the, uh, the file size of uh, 2 MB ok. Uh, so, the figure you know in this figure shows that. So, this is this is the kind of a thing. So, let, let, let us see. So, uh, here I want to kind of uh, you know look at the repair communication bandwidth uh, and so, so you, you can see the what I want to show is that um, uh, uh, the, and this is the best possible you know uh, to do that. Uh, so, 1 plus uh, 2 b has to be greater than or equal to uh, 2, 2 m b and that gives you uh, a, a beta equal to equal to 1.5 mb and, and beta equal to 0.5 mb. So, I also understand what or let us say try to understand what is a mean cut here. So, for example, if I do um, mean cut like this ok and then you can take for example, these two things to uh, do it this should be possible, but then the wh what you get? you get about uh, the the the, uh, the bandwidth you, you get actually beta 3 beta times, but then you will download 3 alpha times. So, so this is the min cut between source and the data collector. So, in this case you know, when you have a cut like this yeah. So, you choose this one now you choose one symbol from here and you cho you, cho you choose uh, beta beta symbols from here. Okay, and what this that is the total ok. Do you see that the cut there shown there has a so in if you if you start looking at the edge capacities of this network and looking at the cut that will tell you the uh, the bandwidth required right. So, this cut uh, has 1 plus 2 beta correct because there it has to uh, talk to these two nodes uh, out uh, with the beta capacities and, uh, and here the cut it comes here there is an alpha flow from this to this. So, this is the, the this much of flow is there to this this node at this point and what this has to be uh, great the 1 plus 2 b uh, this has to be greater than or equal to 2 b 2 m b because that is what what you need to in order to create ok. So, that means that beta has to be greater than or equal to half. So, this is the constraint that comes 
uh, and the uh, the uh, regenerative code uh, bandwidth uh, the trade off is actually this in this example Okay, so using three fragments, you can uh, you can download the things. Okay, um, that's a, so that's a good question. Okay, so, so you you see that here, uh, in you know, for example, you know, this, uh, you can you do better than that? I mean, the one idea is that you know I can probably explain this. Um, uh, so what was the initially thing happened? So you got, you have a nodes with let us say A, B, and A plus B, B, and A plus 2 A, B, right? Now this has been gone. So this has a capacity 1, full of 1 MB. Um, and so when you, when, when you are creating a new node, yeah, you will, um, so for example, here if you choose the, the, if, if, if the, what I am saying is that if the min cut you can cut like this is another cut, but you, there you can see that the cut is, is actually 3 much higher than that. So out of all this uh, gra graph now, uh, you, ca you couldn't do uh, better than uh, the um, better than um, uh, all 3 betas. Yeah. So that, that's a, that's a question that I didn't see. It. Let, let me check. Um, so pardon? Pardon? Yeah, beta is less than alpha. Yeah, beta is less than equal to alpha. Yes. 3 alpha is more than yeah yeah that's what that's also yeah that's a good that's a good good one correct yeah but well, in this particular exam yeah yeah no, sir. Three so 3 beta um, so uh, alpha is basically equal to 1 so okay so, alpha no alpha is um, in of 0.5 mb each okay the fragments are 0.5 mb each so, uh, so the symbols transmit each symbol is 0.5 okay uh, Alpha is the number of symbols. So number of symbol is one, but the size of the symbol is 0.5. 0.5, yeah. Okay, alpha is yeah. Yeah, that's that's also so true. Beta we are talking in MBs. MBs, yeah. Uh, no, that MB is just remember it's just a symbol. Whether you, you could think it as a one or, or thing, that doesn't matter. It's a half symbol. Half symbol, yeah. So it's a half symbol, then um, So, so basically the storage uh, uh, repair bandwidth, uh, so let us come back to that a uh, bit later on this thing I will explain. We will we'll go for the proof, uh, I think with that one you, it will be much more clearer. So the pa what storage repair bandwidth trade off is that, that parameters of the regenerative code must necessarily satisfy this uh, condition that is it has to be either minimum alpha into d minus, minus i beta. Uh, so you choose every time either alpha or D minus I beta, based on based on the uh, based on whichever is minimal. So that is where the min cut uh, this thing comes there. Uh, so this bound and its proof is uh, basically cut set one. So the proof will we'll just. Uh, 
पढ़ा मैनी वैल्यू या No, no, this is not a three beta. Sorry. If you cut it the other way. This way. Uh -huh. you, 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 in, if this, if you, if you cut this way, then there is not enough flow here. Uh, Uh, so b beta in this case it has to be greater than or equal to so point 0.5 is enough. Point five is enough. If you cut the other way, three beta has to be at least equal to two. At least three beta is equal. Uh, yes, yeah, that's another thing. Three beta is uh, at least equal to be so true. To so, so the, then the beta is not optimized. Yeah. So that's the we kind of thing. Also look at from the bound. So yeah. If for k, if we see the bound, so there is minimum of alpha comma d minus i beta. D minus so i beta. The user is the ith user, yeah. that is, let us say i equals to 0, so it is, has to be minimum of alpha, comma, uh, d beta, d beta yeah. which in this case is 3 beta, yeah. so the minimum of alpha and 3 beta will be alpha, alpha. Because, it, because beta is, let us say, alpha by 2. Okay, exactly, that, 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 that is why the first user uh, we cut it from alpha, alpha. and then uh, the other two users, you, it, it, in order to actually uh, to minimize the, the total bandwidth, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so so the, the, this actually pertaining to the example that we discussed, and that's also uh, actually in this particular small example, uh, the bound is true for both functional as well as exact. Okay, um, then we go to let's re revisit the proof. So let's revisit the proof for the information flow graph again. So the idea of the proof is to actually create a, a graph that actually achieves this bound with equality. And, and you can always show that that is, that is possible by uh, constructing it in a particular way and all, it also uses uh, a, um, um, some innovations in uh, um, uh, topological sorting because they, all the numbers are, uh, are done in one way and other stuff. So for example, here the idea is illustrated again, a, a, you have a source of infinite capacity and they all, um, uh, have with all uh, first 10 nodes will be there and subsequently if a node is uh, uh, failed, then a new node will be created with, so con connecting to D in, in nodes and with, then it will be connected to alpha. Um, uh, so then, then so forth, so this becomes a, a new node. Uh, and so then you can think of, for example, another node has fallen, fallen and then you contact maybe the, the one of these new node uh, and then other d minus one part. Uh, so the next one, you next one, which so you you you, you, you do it in a, in a in a sequential way and without loss of generality, you could choose the one always the one with the new previous you know the uh, when you re regenerate a new one, you choose the previous one and any other d minus two in the past and so forth, you create this flow graph. So in fact, there are n nodes and the labeled one to n initially in the graph which connect directly to the source S and obtain alpha bits. Then additional nodes join the graph by connecting D existing nodes by downloading beta from bits each. So any data collector T that connects to K subset of out of all nodes of a graph should satisfy a min cut or uh, that should be greater than or equal to from uh, sigma from i is equal to min of dk minus 1 to minimum of alpha into d minus i, I times beta. Furthermore, there exists a graph that matches the bound with equality and that gra graph with the grounds equality is, is actually constructed in this, in this particular way that should. So because each time you know when I am actually uh, choosing the cut appropriately that either it is the alpha, minimum of alpha or d minus beta, d minus y times beta and I, I sum them over and so this, this lemma is a, it requires some more technical details to see and that I will actually come back at the, uh, in the last part of the thing. So I moved it to here because that requires uh, some more uh, concepts from the network coding. So, but if you agree that this is the, this is the example that we looked at it from that one plus, is similar to 1 plus db. So this is somewhat similar to this and 
So, this is this is actually uh, from information theoretic argument you see that the min cut has to be greater than or equal for it to be uh, related. So, that is the bound uh, he is coming to. So, uh, once I have that let us now proceed to give some necessary conditions for the recoverability. So, so from the lemma, so from the previous lemma we know that there exists a graph that g k and d alpha beta whose min cut exactly meets the bound. Then this implies that if you want to ensure the recoverability while allowing a newcomer to connect to any set of d existing nodes. So, you have to have a following <coughs> necessary condition that is uh, the sum of min of alpha minus beta that has to be greater than or equal to beta. So, this is the my reconstruction uh, condition. So, then where b is the size of the message uh, uh, store. Okay. Um, so, now, now we proceed to characterization. So, the feasible, uh, uh, so as a, what happens is that is you can, uh, if you try to minimize uh, beta then alpha needs to go up, if you needs to minimize alpha then that will, there will be uh, some as a beta. So, you already see the, um, the trade off coming into this. Uh, so, that is what the uh, work on storage research uh, res uh, repair uh, trade off. So, now we proceed to this one. So, for each set of parameters, so n, k, d, alpha and gamma. So, gamma is d times beta. There is a family of information flow graphs, each which corresponds to particular evolution of a node failures. Yeah, you, can, you can assume that. Then n, k, d, alpha, gamma uh, tuple will be feasible if the code with storage repair exists. So, you only if the code with storage exists then that is feasible. So, in the example that we consider 4.2 very clearly that it has a tuple 4 comma 2 comma you know 3 d equal to 3. So, remember d can be anywhere between k to n minus 1. So, we uh, you will see that uh, there is some constraints coming on uh, d in a minute, but uh, so this 1, 1 mb uh, file and 1.5 mb is a total bandwidth is feasible and the optimal and also optimal whereas, the standard erasure code would require communication with 2 mb. So, that is the uh, that type of uh, argument for storage repair bandwidth. So, then they actually fit uh, piecewise uh, uh, functions to meet this uh, uh, the trade off uh, value. Uh, I mean that is a bit more technical and then he uses a function within the range and it starts with uh, MSR and there is some more criteria there and then you need to look at the uh, their uh, uh, original paper to go through more it is given in the appendix. So, what he says that for NKD the minimum repair bandwidth happened to be uh, 2 B D divided by 2 K D minus K square come. This is uh, this comes from their uh, uh, from their result. So, at this for, for this purpose I, I take this as a result. Now, to be no, to note that it is a decreasing function of the repair degree D. So, while a newcomer now communicates with more node the size of each communicated block beta block beta becomes smaller fast enough to so that product beta beta decrease. So, this is this comes from their analysis which I have not given you it is there in the book and, and you have to read a bit more clearly. So, once you obtain this lambda min um, then so the it is desirable to now to actually want to minimize both alpha and both uh, gamma as well. Uh, but minimizing alpha results you know once you once you the minimize all then we get to know what is the minimum possible thing. So, what is the what will be the minimum when you minimize what will be the alpha it has to be beta divided by k, but after minimizing alpha then while minimizing gamma for fixed d results in storage solution that minimizes the repair bandwidth. Okay. So, I can now minimize alpha and get one uh, things and then if I uh, minimize uh, the storage bandwidth, then I can get the uh, optim minimizing solution for the repaired bandwidth. So, you can see that it is not possible to minimize both alpha and beta and so both parameters simultaneously and that there is a, a trade off between the choices of parameters alpha and uh, gamma. So, the two extreme points on the storage repair bandwidth trade off now is termed as a minimum storage. Uh, regeneration and the other one is called minimum bandwidth regeneration. Okay. So, for example, here for parameters uh, alpha and beta for the MSR point on the trade off now can be obtained first by minimizing alpha 
and then obtaining by uh, beta to be this. So, once you made alpha is beta times k, then apply minimize beta you get this. So, this is a bit of uh, calculations to be done, it is there in, in the paper. So, an MSR code is defined uh, is defined as NKD regenerating code whose parameters alpha, beta uh, and B satisfies the above equations. So, at this point now each node stores a minimum mode that is necessary to satisfy reconstruction property. Uh, so, on the minimum bandwidth regenerative code, uh, first actually minimizes beta and then minimizes alpha that leads to MBR point. So, you get beta is 2B by this number, you minimize it and then corresponding alpha turns out to be this. So, an MBR code is defined as an NKD code with parameters this satisfying the above condition, MBR point corresponds to minimum possible repair and so forth. So, prayed up uh, on a plot, for example, uh, is, is done this way. So, you have an MSR point um, which is for example, is a storage per node. So, we ran with uh, B uh, equal to B 2700, K equal to 10 and D equal to 18. So, the MSR point is the uh, is something like you, you know 27000 divided by K is how much? Um, it is about uh, 2700 MSR point. So, you get C 2700, this is the storage uh, and the corresponding bandwidth will be like this. So, this is fit through some you know code with R, it is not very things, but this is one equation you can see. So, you can also see in the, this is a, uh, the, another example, I put it today morning, so it is not there in your thing. This is for the cases of uh, say k equal to 5, n equal to 10 and d equal to 9. So, it can up to, so you fix now d equal to n minus 1. Uh, then you, uh, you with, with the paper, they are given in their paper. So, you can see that uh, the storage node for alpha is, uh, uh, so for example, this is the bandwidth, this is the storage, um, uh, the uh, which is the MSR point is, uh, um, um, so, what, what, what is alpha here? n equal to 10, phi equal to 5. So, k equal to 5. So, taking b to be 1, you get about 0.2. So, you get 0.2 there. And uh, and this is another example that is given for values with n equal to 10 and n equal to 10. D is equal to 14. So this is there. The uh, this is about 0.1 because k is 10 in this case. Okay. So as you can see that uh, for all these points here, um, whether the, whether there is there any code that is realizable, and we know now that for MSR point which is uh, this is the storage right, this is the MSR point, this is the MBR point in this one. Uh, there are codes that meet this bound, but are there any other codes uh, meeting these points interior here? Yeah, that is another uh, question that people work on, but from coding theory point of view. Um, so, what would you prefer in, 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 in practice? You would, if, if your data also would like to be compact, would you prefer MSR or MBR? Huh? MSR. So, if you want the data to be compact in a, in a thing, but uh, if you want, for example, a quick uh, recovery, you want to reduce the thing, then you may uh, tolerate a bit higher storage per node. But you would like to, um, uh, you'd like to, you know, repair quickly. So, the MBR. In fact, uh, at the moment uh, in, the, in literature, there are lots of codes that meet MBR and MSR points explicitly and there are ex many explicit construction, which we may not go through in all of them because there is so, so much of literature there. But for some MSR code, we do, we can go through. Uh, but uh, for, there are also very interesting M MBR codes uh, that shows that it is also been given by project product metrics called codes. Um, are, are, uh, then for, for MSR codes, there is also some long distance uh, MDS code, long MDS code uh, and other uh, uh, type of codes that we, we will explain in, in the next uh, uh, lecture or so. 
So, this is the uh, these are the points and then some of the, some of the bibliography for this is based on this. Uh, so, some uh, um, lines of the you know um, sketch of the proof has been given here, but it again depends on first before that you need to have to understand the the, the, the proof of the lemma there uh, and for that some um, conditions such as uh, for example, basically the um, so uh, the min cut uh, you know separating the source and data collector is the uh, has to be larger we, uh, whatever min cut you, you do from source and the data collector it has to be larger than the, the size of the, the, the file. Uh, seeing that within the min cut that is a crucial thing and identifying the min cut where you, you can put the min cut uh, which uh, things you will choose th there are some technicalities involved and that uh, actually goes through the, you know choosing the proper uh, thing. So, for that also you need a, a topological sorting of directed graph and ordering on these things. So, this one I will keep it for there maybe we could uh, go through. Uh, other you know during the break time and then if you have questions we can come back on this so any other